Well, good morning, everyone. Darren and I are here in Greenfield this morning, and we pray the Lord will be with you wherever you are. We thank God for this lovely summer season, and we give thanks for his bounty, his goodness, and his love. So a very, very warm welcome. It is a real joy for us to welcome you week by week, and pray that you receive the blessing that we seek to give you as the people of God in this place. Let us hear the words of the psalmist. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to the Lord, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have brought us to, be, to the beginning of a new day. And we, your children, worship you now in spirit and in truth. We pray your presence with us, Lord, as we honour the name of Jesus, the name that has been given to us. We pray your blessing, and wherever we may be this morning, in whatever situation we find ourselves, help us to remember that your love, your peace, is with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The hymn is, O God, Beyond All Praising. Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, from what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. And we read from chapter 7, beginning to read at verse 1 through to verse 12. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way as you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? 
So in everything, do to others what you would have them do unto you. May the Lord bless to us our reading from his holy word. Amen. Let us join together in our prayers, dear friends. Let us pray. Father, you have brought us to the beginning of a new day and we come as your people to praise and worship you. We thank you for the bounty and the beauty of creation around us and thank you that in the changing seasons we see your manifold goodness to us, your children. Indeed, with the psalmist we would declare that we will lift up our eyes unto the hills and know that our help and strength comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. But yet, Father, we come to give thanks for a greater love. We thank you that in the fullness of time you sent your beloved Son into the world to be the means of our salvation, that we might know that at the heart of this universe is a, a Father's heart of love. And as, Lord, we reach out to you in prayer this day, we know that you meet with us. So we honour, glorify and praise your name and thank you for your constancy and grace. We come in confession of our many sins, our Father, but who is a pardoning God like thee, who has such grace so great and free? Father, forgive us then for all that is wrong in our lives and help us to live lives that give glory to you. So often, Lord, we are insensitive to the needs of others around us, so often we say a word that we know may have caused someone hurt. Forgive us then and help us, help us to live according to the word that you have ordained for us, to do unto others as we would have them do to us. What wonderful words of challenge they are to us, Lord, in this dark and indifferent world in which we live. What a wonderful way, what a wonderful counsel to follow as we seek to do your will, Lord. We thank you that you enable us through your forgiveness to fulfil that calling you have placed upon us to spread the light of Christ in all and every situation we find ourselves. Lord, we thank you for your church gathered in this place and every church that is represented today by those who are watching, perhaps in many distant places. We thank you that we are united in Christ. We thank you that the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. Lord, help us in these days to to be those who love each other and seek to honour each other above the differences that are perhaps within us and help us as those who love Christ to be united in our witness and testimony in this dark and evil world of which we are a part. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that you will strengthen the bonds of love that are between us, that we might be united in our witness and in our work in showing the love of Christ, being faithful to your word, and declaring the salvation that is in him alone. Lord, we thank you for each other, and we pray especially for those who are suffering great persecution for their faith and trust in you. Lord, there are so many who are leaving everything on the altar of service for you, and who suffer because of their faithfulness and for their love of you, and their desire to share the gospel in situations of darkness and persecution. O oh, Heavenly Father, uphold your people, we pray. Remember your persecuted church today. May they receive mercy and protection from on high. And Lord, if we are feeling this morning that we are lonely or if there are problems that seem to be insurmountable in our lives, help us to remember that you are with us. The word has reminded us today, ask and you will receive, the door will be opened. Father, there are wonderful promises. Help us to discern those promises in light of the revelation of your grace. We recognise before you, Lord, that we are those sometimes who know that we fail. We are those sometimes who know we wander from the ways of truth and righteousness. Forgive us, Father, but help us to take to heart the word that is given to us and to know that as Jesus taught us, he will be with us even to the end of the age. So, Father, be with us in our worship today in this place and every place where Jesus Christ is proclaimed as Lord. And to your name be the glory. We ask these things in and through the name of Jesus, our Saviour, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our next thing, dear friends, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Well, dear friends, as we come around the word today, we give thanks to God for his faithfulness. I'd like to share with you some thoughts today from what has become known as the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus addressed a number of people and gave to them the, the great principles of the kingdom of God. This might well be called the manifesto of the kingdom of God, for it outlines to us the blessedness of the Christian life, of the certainty that God teaches us the ways of righteousness and truth. We are in a time when many schools will be breaking up for the summer recess. Universities have already closed. There's been a lot of learning around. I was attending my granddaughter's leaving service in one of the local schools uh, this week, and what a lovely service it was. Children who were moving up from their junior school to the secondary school, and it was a lovely time of reflecting on the past and giving thanks for the years that have been. From the very first day when the little toddlers were brought by their mums and dads, to this beginning of a new adventure, it had been a number of years in which they had learned much along the way. And there was an affinity there. There were some tears there as the children were leaving, but also a great sense of optimism for the future because they had been taught with caring and loving teachers. And because as the headmaster said, don't forget if you ever see your teachers along the way in the street, perhaps in the shopping center, don't forget to go on to them and say, hello, I'm so-and-so, because you will change, you will grow up. We, the teachers, will always say the same. It was a lovely thought, and I'm sure there were many who that day will remember with gratitude the many teachers, as we remember those in our lives who taught us and instructed us along the way, who mentored us and cared for us in the world of education. Of course, we recognize that Life is a, a learning circle, is it not? And when we leave school, perhaps we learn more when we have left school than when we were there, because it's the education of life. 
But here we have some teachings, teachings that Jesus gave in a particular context, in a particular way. He was outlining what it was to be a Christian and what it meant to be those who trusted and believed in God. Not only the God of creation, because Jesus did say, consider the lilies of the field, they neither toil, but yet the Lord keeps them. Tomorrow it is thrown in the fire. We are much more than that, O ye of little faith. He said, do not worry. Let tomorrow take care of itself. And he gave us three main points, I believe, here today, which I hope will be of help to us. He's already spoken about the blessedness of the Christian life, of being blessed when we are peacemakers, when we walk humbly with God, when we seek to do others as we would seek them for us. He's taught us the way that when we are persecuted for righteousness sake, we are the children of God. There is much here to encourage us, but there are some wonderful promises as well. The first we read in chapter seven, of course, is ask and it will be given to you. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What a wonderful promise that is. And you may say, well, Lord, I have prayed often in my life, and those prayers don't seem to have come to anything. There has been no fruition, as it were. Can I really believe these words? But then we must remember that God has eternity to work out his purposes, and he has all of our lives to deal with us when we come to him in prayer. You and I know if we are parents, we don't give everything to our children that they ask for. For we know that if we did that, sometimes we would be giving them those things that are not of their good. But we must follow these words with the promise that Jesus made that he would be with us. And when we truly seek him, then his presence will be with us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That reflects a simple yet profound faith in God. It means that we trust the words of Jesus and know that he has our good in his heart. To know that even as we look in this dark and troubled world, and when we ask that prayers would be answered for those who are in need, that one day in entrusting them to the love and care of God, that will come to fruition. Not in our time, this side of glory possibly, but in his for the kingdom will come. So when we ask in all sincerity, when we pray for others, when we seek to build our lives upon the faith that we have come, which we have come to know in our lives, then we can trust these words. Things of God have been and will be given to us. What are those things? The assurance of eternal life, a way of life that is grounded in loving each other and extending the boundaries of the kingdom of God seeking to do his will. And when we pray that his will will be fulfilled, he comes alongside us and enables us to be lightness in the dark of the world out there. And we will find that blessing. And many a door will be open to us, doors of opportunity to serve and to help. Do you think we are alone in those? No, of course we are not. Because the Lord gives us of the best. And when we trust and believe in him, we will know that to be wonderfully true. He goes on to speak about a God who provides. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And that's right, is it not? We care for our children. Teachers care for their children, entrusted to their care, giving them every opportunity along the way, the good things of life. Sadly, so many people seek things in life that are not good. And we know that by the society in which we live and move and have our being. We live in a society that seems to have gone in different directions in terms of those basic truths of the word of God. The reality is that the word of God is given to us as a a seal and as a guide. Following the Ten Commandments even would change the aspect of the world peace and, and there would be tolerance and love if only we loved our neighbor as we loved ourselves, as Jesus says. God gives to us the good things, the good things of life, the love of family and friends, the community of the church of which we are part, where we grow in faith and knowledge of Christ. We come as those who believe that the church is part of of the good things that God has given to us, communities of faith 
where we are nurtured and where we grow in faith, when we learn more about the God of creation, but even more know the God of redemption in Christ. And Christ becomes to us the light and the joy that enables us to be the salt of the earth. Those are the give, good gifts that God gives to us. And those gifts are precious, dear friends. The word of God is precious. The gift of prayer is precious. That we are enabled to, to receive gladly that which God gives to us day by day. And the blessings come, it is we. It is we in our arrogance and in our selfishness and our greed as, a, as the humanity of which we are a part create wars and rumours of wars and there's devastation and there's pain and suffering while well, God wants to lavish the goodness of brotherhood, compassion, love, grace and care. For those are the give good gifts that he gives to us. Dear friends, let's celebrate today in the church that we receive the abundance of God's grace. Let's celebrate that we love a saviour who died for our sins on the cross, that we might be redeemed and ransomed and forgiven for our sins. Let's celebrate the goodness of God's love by sharing the love of Christ at every opportunity. But the good news needs to be shared and the good news is for all who would come. And then finally, we find here that the Father not only gives to us, but that he provides for us so abundantly. He teaches us the way in which we should live to do unto others as we would have them do to us. Well, what a wonderful challenge that is, and a challenge which we can hold on to. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That's what we read as the central theme of the Sermon on the Mount. And do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. When we ask, God will give. When we trust, we will give. And when we will respond positively to the call of the gospel in our lives by being the means of helping and supporting others. But that great and wonderful truth of seeking his kingdom, his kingdom of righteousness and love. And so today, dear friends, as we live in this dark and evil world, we give thanks that we have a manifesto, we have a guide, we have a teacher. And when we listen and when we adhere to the words of this wonderful Sermon on the Mount, a part of it we've looked at today, that we begin to realise how generous and loving God is, how he outlines for us a way of life that leads us from the ways of the world, from the ways of darkness, to the ways of, life, of love and care, kindness and compassion, and that we do to others as we would have them do to us. And if we did that, dear friends, what a difference there would be in the world out there. No more wars, no more pain, no more hunger, no more need. It's hallmarks of the kingdom of God that are revealed to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. When I left that school assembly, that final leaving service earlier this week, I felt uplifted in a sense. There were so many young lives there on the stage who would be beginning a new term in September in a different school. They will have been those who would have learned good things in school. Now they go on to learn even more. And what the headmaster did say, don't forget, he said, if you see us, come and see us. Because us, we teachers, we always say the same. It is you who grow. It is you who will change physically. Perhaps we won't recognize you, but come on, because you'll always be a child of this school. Dear friends, we are the children of God. We change in many different ways, but he remains the same. We are part of the family of God, the children of God, who walk in the light of his salvation. Indeed, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. And do not worry about tomorrow, for God is with you, as is with me and all his people. Amen. We conclude our, dear, our service, dear friends, with the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Now may the peace of God that passeth all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge of his love and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us and those we love now and always. Amen. <laughs>